So the next step after uh, what happens in the Krebs cycle is uh, something that's called phosphorylated oxidation. Now remember that the Krebs cycle is happening inside the matrix, okay? Inside the mitochondria. Now, one thing that I want to, to you to know before we get any further is that the mitochondria is a very special kind of organelle, and here's why. When you look at the outside of the mitochondria, that is a membrane. When we look on the inside of the mitochondria, and all the folds here, that's another membrane. It's like having a balloon inside a balloon. Okay, so the balloon is made of a structure, and that's a membrane. And then pushing another balloon inside uh, will will uh, will have. A, so basically, if we have a balloon inside a balloon, the balloon that's inside is another membrane, right? So just imagine that you have a balloon, you blow it up, it becomes this big. And the balloon that's inside is bigger than the actual size of the outside balloon. Well, what's going to happen to the membrane on the inside? It's going to fold, right? It won't be totally extended. So that's the important part here, OK? I want to show this. Now, membrane here and then membrane on the outside. So this is my membrane. That's my internal membrane. Okay, so that's internal, so that's on the inside, right? So that's this one right here. And then what we have here is the outside membrane, and that's the membrane that is right here. In between those two membranes, we have a space, and that's called the intermembrane space. Okay, so that side here is on the matrix side in red right here, that's on this one here is on the outside, right? It looks out. That's the outer membrane right here. And then in between, we have the intermembrane space. Inside the matrix, this is where the Krebs cycle happens. Oxidative phosphorylation happens inside those membranes, OK? So that's where it all happens. Now, it's called oxidative phosphorylation. Why oxidative? Well, because electrons will be passed. So the electrons are now trapped inside both NADH and FADH2 will be passed on and released. And because there's a loss of electrons here, because we transform this into NAD+, or FADH, the electrons are, the electrons are um, released, okay? So that's why we have, we have oxidative. Now why do we have phosphorylation? Well, if you remember well, phosphorylation means adding phosphate, right? Well, the phosphorylation in oxidative, oxidative phosphorylation means this. And that's a super important phosphorylation here. What it means is that what we're going to do at a high, in a high quantity, a lot of that, we are going to convert ADP into ATP. And that happens with the addition of a phosphate. So that's where the phosphorylation in oxidative phosphorylation, this is where it's coming from, OK? So that's what you need to keep in mind. Now, remember that ATP is a high energy molecule. ADP has less energy than ATP, right? So where is the energy increase coming from? It's coming from the electrons that are released. Where are the electrons coming from? They're coming from glucose. Where are the glucose molecules? How is this molecule, how, why is glucose such a high energy molecule because the energy comes from the sun, okay? So, it, there, it, and that, that energy is harvested during um, photosynthesis. Where are the electrons coming from? Water, right? So water is split, as we will see in photosynthesis. Water is split, electrons are released, incorporated in carbon dioxide, creating glucose. 
glucose enters the cell, gets degraded in pyruvate, pyruvate enters the mitochondria, the mitochondria converts this, this molecule into carbon 6, 4, and 5, and 4, releasing carbon dioxide, harvesting the electrons. Where are the electrons? The electrons are inside a transporter, in ADH, if ADH2. What are we going to do with those electrons? We're going to high, use the high energy in order to convert ADP into ATP. That's what we shall see in the next step.